guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 2. Today we're going to be doing a theory video. But before we get into today's main topic, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new, and turn on notifications so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Well, considering this is my last video of 2021, next year. But in today's video, we're going to be talking about Lieutenant Mitch Anderson. He is a character that was introduced in the most recent Season 2 trailer of Superman Lois. He is probably the most memorable bit of that trailer because it's a new character and a potential antagonist for Superman in Season 2 and the only one that we've been teased with so far. So naturally this has got people talking and people interested. Who is this lieutenant? Why is he so important? And does his name ring any bells from the comic books? So yes, let's start with Mitch Anderson. Is he a character in the comics? And the simple answer to that is, yeah, he is a character. He was created in 1992. He first appeared in Justice League America, issue number 69, where he goes by Mitchell Anderson, aka Mitch Anderson, which is, you know, his nickname. And so he doesn't actually have much relation to being a lieutenant or the army in the comics. So that is where a deviation has been made by the show and the writers, which is where a lot of today's theory comes in because it seems that they've mixed two characters together and named them just Mitch Anderson. So in the comics, Mitch Anderson is actually a good guy. He is a superhero. He's known as Outburst. He is a Superman related character, so it makes sense that he shows up in Superman Lois. He is part of the Superman of America, he lives in Metropolis, he operates out of there, and he does in fact have superpowers, which is one of the big things that we're going to be talking about in today's video. His powers are related to magnetism and basically he's able to manipulate stuff using his magnetic powers. Now there's a lot more that you can read online, that is kind of the basics that I want you guys to know because now we're going to move on to the next point and this kind of goes into the big theory of this whole video and so it seems in the trailer Mitch this lieutenant is giving people powers because in the trailer there isn't anyone standing behind him but they release some photos of the exact same scene and there is two people, two soldiers standing behind him wearing House of Vell crests. And so it's nearly impossible that they kind of just walked in and ran in really fast. They probably zipped in using their superpowers. And so it seems what is going on is the DoD and Mitch Anderson are giving soldiers powers. And so the fact that he's giving people powers to defend his country makes it make sense that he probably is going to give himself powers at some point if he already doesn't have them. And obviously to himself he's not a villain as of right now and we don't know the trajectory that he's going to take throughout this whole season but his allegiance is clear. He wants what is best for America. He will do anything in his power to get justice and to make America a great place and obviously he does this via the army and so by giving his soldiers powers to defend the country and be better than the other soldiers from around the world that they maybe will inevitably have to fight or the threats they have to take down. By making them more powerful, he's thinking he's doing the right thing and he is the hero. And with Superman not accepting his agreement to essentially be a soldier of the US Army, means he's not good because he's not doing what Mitch thinks is right. Okay, so we don't know what powers he is going to be giving to the soldiers, although in the photos it's heavily hinted that those powers are going to be Kryptonian because of the House of El Crest on their chest. However, it may just be a symbolic thing and they might have different types of powers. However, with them speeding in, it would make sense if they did have Kryptonian powers. But I have to emphasize, nothing is confirmed. We don't even know if these guys have powers or not. It just seems a little crazy for them to zip in in a scene where they weren't seen in the trailer, but they are in the photos. And so they could be creating a whole army of super soldiers with different abilities and not just Kryptonian. Maybe some of them have Kryptonian abilities like these two, but with their experiments, who's to say that they aren't going to be giving out like a range of powers to different people including Lieutenant Mitch Anderson himself. So this is where my theory comes in. And so I have to give a big shout out to Silhouetted Animator who first brought up this theory in yesterday's live stream. If you missed it, you can go check it out. It's up on the channel right now. And so let's talk about this. Will Lieutenant Mitch Anderson become 
Captain Atom. Captain Atom in the comics is a patriotic hero of America. He is the result of a secret government project and he was once a US Air Force officer during the Vietnam War. This is the basics that you need to know about Captain Atom but also his powers. Captain Atom has the power to possess nuclear energy and the silver chrome suit that he wears contains his powers and if that is not there that nuclear energy inside of him will release and as you see many times in the comics if you've read these comics Captain Atom has exploded and died and caused an all out explosion even recently he destroyed like the entirety of one of the American coasts but this is all in the comics and so with the character type of Captain Atom and him, well his name is Nathaniel Adams in the comics, it seems that Lieutenant Mitch Anderson could very well be a mix of Captain Atom and Mitch Anderson from the comics because as I mentioned earlier Mitch Anderson isn't related to the US government at all and here in the comics Captain Atom is heavily related to the American government and especially because his powers similar to Captain America was the result of a secret government project and what do we see in the Superman Lower Season 2 trailer? A secret government project giving soldiers powers it seems. And so with this government project going on and with this guy spearheading it supposedly, it makes sense that he's going to give himself powers and so that would be the result of a secret government project just like how Captain Atom got his powers in the comics. So. If he takes a turn for the good and realizes, yes, I'm doing this in the wrong way, but I could be a hero, he could very well turn into Captain Atom in the Arrowverse, which I would be so here for because I love him and I'm sure many of you guys like him. I think his powers are very unique and the way he looks is very cool. He's completely metallic. I guess you can make relations to other characters like Nate Haywood, aka Steel from Legends of Tomorrow because his appearance is obviously very similar, he has the ability to go like fully metallic. However, Captain Atom's appearance is very much so permanent and if this government project goes wrong and Superman puts a shutdown to it, which you can presume is going to happen because he's not going to take lightly to them creating new Kryptonians because he literally just saw what Morgan Edge did when he tried to create all these Kryptonians and so with the DoD doing it, he's going to try and put a stop to that and so maybe one of the last standing people is going to be Lieutenant Mitch Anderson and Superman is going to have probably a big fight against him if he does turn out to be like I imagine. However there is always the chance that he could just be a normal lieutenant and he's just operating this secret government project that's making super soldiers and he definitely could be the villain of the whole season but I see someone greater and more evil probably taking over that role. I think as of right now, from what we can see in the trailer, yes, Mitch isn't taken very nicely to Superman rejecting his offer to pledge his allegiance to America when obviously Superman doesn't need to do that because he protects them and he will always protect them and he knows that and we know that. That's not how the army operates. But he is still doing it with the best of intentions for himself and doing it the way that he thinks is right. But obviously to us and to Superman, it doesn't seem very right to create these OP soldiers and send them out into battlefields and have them at home to protect themselves against villains. But they could very well exploit their powers and use them to take control of anyone that doesn't listen to them. And that's always the big issue with superheroes and them being so powerful. That's why the DoD and General Lane last season had this secret project where they were testing kryptonite and finding ways to take out superman because they don't trust someone that is that powerful and so the same can be said to the DoD creating these super soldiers because we don't know what they're going to do are they going to set them on the civilians it could become a whole ass regime where they're controlling over everyone by the threat of these superpower beings working for them. So that's it for my theory in regards to Captain Atom. Do you think it's possible that this could become true or do you think it's a bit too far-fetched? Let me know down in the comments below. I have one more thing to go over before we end this video and this is coming from SFX Magazine. And so these are some quotes from Todd Helbing, the showrunner on Superman Lois, where he addresses who the main villain of the season could be. And so he goes, 
and says this, The fans are going to know the path we're going to go down really quickly. In a really good way, the Superman issue he has is driving the issues he has as a dad. This is a particular villain that the more I talk about, the more people are going to figure out who it is, but Superman is dealing with an enemy that is going to be a massive headache for him. Todd Helbing goes on to say there are multiple villains really. Both villains affect Clark and Lois personally. We start out with one villain that is really more Superman or setting up the Lois villain. They are not working together, but they hand off in a cool way this season. One of them comes to the forefront and in a lot of ways is more powerful than the other one. It will take the whole team in a different way than last year to stop this person. Now this is very interesting. These are the quotes from Todd Helbing in regards to who the Superman Lois season 2 villain is going to be. He has confirmed there is two villains in fact, which is a new thing for Superman and Lois even though they kind of did two villains with the red herring of John Henry Irons being Lex Luthor. Obviously he didn't turn out to be a villain and the main villain of the season was in fact Tal Ro. So I would say it's new because these are going to be two proper villains and apparently us fans are going to know the path they're taking really quickly. So I would guess in the first couple of episodes we're going to get some big hints about what path we're going to be taking in the season 2 and that will help us suss out who these villains are and he says this particular villain so one of the villains is going to be a massive headache for him so if we're talking headaches it's going to be someone that is going to dig into superman's mind he's going to get with inside of him and mess with him so similar to a lex luthor type villain you would have to guess it's not going to be lex it's very unlikely that they will get john cryer back or have another version because they had that last season and it seems he is adamant that they are going to take a different path with their villains this season. So I'm not entirely sure who it could be, I guess it could be Brainiac because that would definitely give him a big headache, haha <laughs> Brainiac. But they recently did that on Krypton so I'm not entirely sure how likely that is. Also Brainiac is a villain in the future that they talked about on Supergirl and he is a villain that the Legion of Superheroes have had to take down. But maybe this is his first appearance on Earth and, you know, he causes bigger troubles in the future. We'll have to wait and see. Not entirely sure about the Brainiac theory, just one that came to mind. But what I think is really interesting is the fact that we have a villain for Clark and we have a villain for Lois. They aren't working together, but one kind of sets up the next. And so maybe it starts with Superman's villain, then it kind of leads into Lois's villain and... Yes, they're not going to work together, but they're going to hand off in a way and then they will become each other's villains as well. Not just like a singular villain for each character. So at one point, they're going to all be trying to take down this one guy at the end of the season, whoever it turns out to be. And probably the one with the big headache for Superman is going to be extremely powerful and with the other being a bit less powerful, but probably very cunning for Lois. And as Todd Helbing says, it will take the whole team in a different way than last year to stop this person. And so it definitely seems that we're going to have this first villain, then we're going to lead into the second one, and that's going to be like our final villain of the entire season. And I'm pretty damn sure Lieutenant Mitch Anderson isn't going to be that starting villain. Yes, he could be that big headache, and he could turn into, you know, a superpower being because he's creating these super soldiers. And I don't really see him being that first villain, although there is always the chance that he does turn out to be as they've been teasing him in the latest trailer. Maybe he is the villain of the first half, and he gives himself powers, and... He takes down Superman and is a big headache for him. We'll just have to wait and see. So remember guys, Superman and Lois returns for season 2 in not very long at all, in 12 days time on January 11th at 8, 7 central on the CW, so taking over the Flash's normal spot for now. And we'll be sure to make lots more videos as Superman and Lois season 2 releases and hopefully you guys are going to stick around for it. So for now, thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps out the videos if you can. Also subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new so you don't miss any future videos next year. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye and have a happy new year.
icy room.